Hello, Abraham. I am very thankful for your work and for being here. And I am amazed that all my questions were answered, but then I got a new one. And <laughs> I think that's how it goes, right? That is why we call it co-creation at its best. We love the ones that hatch because you get in the receptive mode and then you hatch a question. And in the receptive mode, you're going to hear the answer. Okay, then I'm, I'm really happy about it. I'm happy about having the new question too. So when we were talking about understand it, but don't explain it. And what we mean by that, when we say that to Esther, because everything we say, we're saying to the person we're saying it to for the reason that we're saying it. So that's why you can't take something that we've said to somebody and apply it necessarily across the board because you're all in a different place. But the reason we say that, what we mean by that is don't try to explain it to someone who's not in a position to hear it. Because when you try to explain something to somebody who can't hear it, then how they feel about it often is something that you begin to observe and then you take on their doubt or their clutter into your vibration and then you diminish your own power. So that's what we say. Don't try to explain to people who first of all, aren't asking. And second of all, are not ready to hear what they're asking for. And you can kind of tell in the tone of the question, when someone asks the question, well, how come <laughs> you can sort of tell they're not ready <laughs> or why not me? They're not ready. Or how come they get it? And I don't, they're not ready. Right. But I also took it to mean like for myself, for instance, there are people teaching. Have you all. noticed that we never stop explaining to you all? <laughs> We're explaining it and explaining it and explaining it and explaining it and explaining it. We understand it and we are explaining, but we understand in our explaining that often you are ready to hear. And we also understand that even if you're not right now, this red hot minute, really ready to understand it fully, you'll get enough of it that then life will show it to you. And then you'll understand. Oh, that's good. And my question had to do with journaling because when we're talking about this understand, but don't explain, I got it to me, to me, like, because there's some people that say it's important to understand what you're, where you're coming from. And sometimes journaling can help you process what it is that you have, that you believe, because sometimes it can be so automatic that you don't even realize you have this feeling. So that's what I understood by understand, but don't keep, exp once you understand, just don't keep well, explaining if, what it is. Here's the thing about that. We think journaling is nice, but we would use our journaling to emphasize our momentum. We wouldn't use it so much to try to get momentum going as we would when we recognize that we feel good to just keep it going and maybe practice the feeling of it longer. What happens with people sometimes is that in the examination, they introduce more resistance than is necessary. You just have to be aware of how you're feeling when you're doing it. Okay. Yeah. I have used journaling for the future, like writing what I wanted and I manifested a few things in that way. But recently I have been, when you write it, there is a stronger point of focus for some people for me is for instance, I'm good with words. So this is not my English is not my native language. And I'm so thankful that I can have this conversation with you. So nothing <laughs> in and of itself is ever right or wrong. It's how you're feeling about it while you're doing it. That really matters. And so if you're just really frustrated or discouraged about something, we wouldn't journal about it because all you're going to do is enhance and sort of solidify the vibration of resistance. But when you're soaring, that's when we would journal. But do you think it would be useful uh, if I journal with the intention to, okay, I'm going to start through this to get the learning from it. And so I can leave this belief behind because once I know what it is, I can choose differently. Here's something that we would really like you to focus on. Sometimes by writing it, you do remember it, but it's simply because you've practiced the vibration of it longer. Just remember this. Your brain is not a storage cabinet. It's a transmitting and receiving mechanism. So rather than trying to remember things, just feel as good as you can feel. So you're in the receptive mode so that you can receive what's important moment by moment, by moment, by moment. In other words, that's where your intuition comes from and your spontaneity and your good timing and your clarity. But if you try to remember, then you just get all bogged down. Sometimes Esther will say, so-and-so has a really good memory. And we remind her it's not memory. It's tuning to a frequency that 
brings that back again. Have you ever noticed that when you get with this friend, you almost always talk about this. And when you get with this friend, you almost always talk about this. And when you get with this friend, you almost always talk about this. And that's not because you're remembering picking up where you left off. It's because that's where you left that active vibration. And that's where you're rendezvousing. So again, you might want to play with your friends is let's see where we're going now. Let's go our separate ways for a day or however long and let's find our vibrational high place and then let's get back together and see what new thing we accomplish together. So you're talking about journaling, like for remembering from the day, right? There's also another way that it can be done. For instance, you write until you figure something out, not necessarily retelling a story, but just trying to figure something out. Anything that you're doing that's working for you, of course, keep doing it. We can tell you're really hung up on this journaling yeah. thing. So <laughs> journal your little heart away. We're okay. not trying to discourage it in any way. <laughs> if it makes you feel better, if it gets the energy moving, it's a good thing. Oh, that's good to hear because I'm hung up on it, but I was willing to let it go if it wasn't a, the best idea. So, well, just pay attention to how you feel. It's sort of like S used to sit at night and watch a little bit of television and the catalogs because she would order from things online and catalogs would come 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 and she had a pile of them by her bedside because she wasn't there very often and so then when she'd get there she would sit and she would just start turning the pages of the catalog and at first it was just delightful but once she made herself through about 10 or 20 catalogs she felt sick to her stomach <laughs> and it was because it was just too much stimulation about things that were not actively wanted in her experience right now. In other words, it was like someone offering to her things that she had not asked for. Don't you really like it when life lets you know you want it and you can just Google it and find it and order it rather than going through pages and pages. Don't want anything on this page. Don't want anything on this page. Don't want anything on this page. And so there's something to be said for just letting the universe give you what you want. Just take it easy. We think this is a really good time for a segment of refreshment. So I've watched a lot of your films on homosexuality and they're all really, really good. But I had a question because I definitely picked to be gay. I was gay from day second one, day one. Does everybody pick one of their lifetimes to be gay to experience it? Is it something you have to learn or not everybody and what is it isn't like that you're going to enjoy an understanding of this the most significant thing that we want to say to you is that oh and this is so helpful in terms of what we were just talking about so the subject that is highlighted right now that we really want to emphasize is what does my vortex look like in relationship with what I perceive it to be so let's just stay there for a minute. You've put so many things into your vortex as you stand here in this physical body that there isn't one of you who could really recognize and define in precision what's in there because you've put it in there over a long period of time. It's been gestating and law of attraction has been gathering cooperative components. It takes on a life of its own, so to speak. It becomes more vibrationally viable to the essence of it all day, every day. Did you get what we mean by that? It keeps becoming more and more evidential of the vibrational components that you've put there. Another way of saying that is sometimes you have to see it before you even know you created it. Helpful? This is big. <laughs> you should be yahooing a little. <laughs> or we will find more ways to say it to you until you really get it. When someone's rude, you want them to be nicer. And when that happens a few thousand times, you've got a viable desire in your vortex that is ready to come to fruition. When you don't have enough money, you want more money. That one's easy. But there are so many experiences at all levels of your being, even cellular levels of your being, that the evolution of all species is about this vibrational reality. And so let's just simplify the statement by saying, you don't get your vortex very well. You heard that. Didn't you? you don't really get your vortex all that well. So we begin using words like, but if you understand the essence of what's in your vortex, then the manifestations of it as they happen, you'll feel, oh yeah, that was something that I really wanted to happen, but I wasn't able to define the details of it in this precise way. That's why it's a wonderful thing how life continues to surprise and delight you even though you've created every bit of it you must wonder 
Well, if I created it, then why would I be surprised when it gets here? <laughs> because you created the essence of it, but you didn't create the specifics of it. So now let's understand the same thing because anything that's true, once you're here in your physical body is true in the non-physical realm before you got here, because it's all based upon the same laws. Mm -hmm. So you have this intention, this essence of an intention that goes like this. I see in the physical leading edge environment that most people are conformists. So I would like to come forth with a very strong, clear intent not to conform. I won't be someone who feathers somebody else's nest or jumps through the hoops that somebody else wants me to jump to. I will be already predispositioned to not go that way on an issue that is particularly significant. So sexuality is one way that translates because they're not going to pound that square peg into that round hole, are they? <laughs> and stop it. <laughs> <laughs> we blame Esther for that. We do. We blame Esther for that. Another way that that comes forth. Good time for a segment of refreshment. Another way that that comes forth is children with autism is another example. They come not ready to be socialized in the way that society wants to socialize them, which causes society to have to adjust around them rather than adjusting into society, which is really the best thing that any of you can come to understand. Because if you can give up your belief or expectation that you have the power to make others perform in a way that you want them to perform or to create a condition that you can then respond to, you are missing the point that needing the condition to change before you can feel good is really of detriment. And so it's a service to society. It's a service to consciousness moving forward. It's a strong intention. And so the question about, well, does everybody have to have a lifetime where they do that? No, it isn't like that at all. But there are powerful teachers that often want to make powerful points in ways that make paradigm shift differences. And that's what that's about. Something else? No, that, yeah, that, no, that, that was very good. Thank you. Really good. Thank really you. Good. Thank you very much.